Stay Doomed is part of the IWEP Podcast Network. Good evening, grave robbers, and welcome back to the television graveyard. We are your TV necromancers, Lara Prince and Noah Houlihan. We've come here tonight to examine the spirits of past television shows, to find out which ones could be resurrected, should be resurrected, and which ones should stay doomed. This is a podcast in which we'll analyze the history, the hype, and the aftermath of shows that ran only one season, only one episode, or were never aired at all. With me, as always, is TV's Noah Houlihan. <gasps> I'm going to clash with the drapes. We are doing 1950s Let's Join Joni. Let's Join Joni, as voted by our patrons who asked us to review the oldest pilot we could find. And uh, this is what we came up with. Let's Join Joni. Yes, so this was, this was uh, made for CBS. It was unsold. Uh, ultimately, the actress Joan Davis would become uh, more popular a couple of years later for I Married Joan. Yes. Uh, the but, logical sequel to this. So she becomes, you know, she actually does become a more famous actress. This is right. the first attempt. This was based on her radio show. Oh, okay. So this was actually like based on a previous property. Oh, I didn't know that. So the audience could kind of be assumed... Uh, it was based on the radio show Leave It to Joan. That's really surprising, actually, because so much of this is very visual. The yes. idea that this started out as a radio show is very interesting. It makes a lot of sense to me, though, because probably a lot of the plots that were not visual could have been done on the radio. Yeah, that makes sense, too. That makes a lot of sense. But uh, before we get too far in, yeah, we should pour one out. Yes, let's pour one out. What you got over there? So I started with uh, some passion water for the very passionate Joan. And then I mixed in uh, some uh, grenadine and some blue coruscant. So they would mix together and make a nice purple plague. Mmm. There is an unbelievable amount of flavor in every sip. You want to try it? Yeah. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, it hurts your teeth. Oh, God, no. What do you got? I have the uh, something strong mated with something weak. Okay. Or physically strong with physically weak. Yeah. Which is something uh, Jim Benson says to Joni. So it is um, vodka and mango lime seltzer. Mmm. How, how is it? She, he asked, taking a sip. Bubbly. Is that normal vodka in that? No. It's watermelon. Mint? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, wasn't ready for mint in this. It's uh, what we had in the house. <laughs> so enjoy that as we, uh, let's jump into this. Okay. So we start with a narrator. We start with like a newsreel yes. type thing of like 8.30 a.m., Everyone is a cog in the... Everyone is a cog... Stop it. That, well, that's what happens. Yeah. Is the narrator's trying to talk and a really loud bird is there. 8.30 a.m. and a city stirs into life. Everyone is a cog in the American machine and blah, blah, blah. We're gonna and be... then loud train. All over this great land, men and women are on their way to take their places behind their desks, beside their counters, at their machines. <laughs> yeah, like it's very much, but it's set up to be very news, really, and set mm -hmm. up like uh, 1950s, the American working girl. Now, let's join Joni. And she is uh, in bed. Yeah, he, and he's like encouraging us. Like, everybody, we're doing it. We're going to join Joni. Here we go. Let's join her. So uh, then the voiceover shifts to being Joni. Yes. Yeah, there I am. Aren't I a little darling? She's like full on. Uh, it reminded me of Frozen when Anna is asleep. Yeah. And, and Anna is just like a gross mess. Yeah, with her mouth hanging open and stuff. So. 
the the narrator, who's Joni, is kind of talking about the dream she's currently having. Yeah, where she's dreaming of a handsome tenant down the hall named Mr. Mm. Benson. And it's always the same dream. They're waltzing. He tells her how lovely she is, and he's about to propose marriage. And she kind of rolls over. So her face is in the pillow, and but she's all scrunched up. And she says, look, part of me is up already. The part that is up is her butt. Yeah, she is, as the kids would say, face down, ass up. Yeah, that's the way I like to hook. Uh, but... This would be kind of scandalous in the 50s. Maybe. I mean, Because we're talking about a woman's prosperior. But it's very played for laughs. Yes. Um, so she lives in like an apartment building. It's not uncommon for a single woman of the time. Yeah. Uh, she says tenant a lot, like to remind us that they're renting. Yes. Which I, at first I was like, are they in a boarding house? But I guess they kind of are. Like, they're very studio apartment-y. Yeah. Like, they're not big places. Uh, there's a cute vis- uh, physical gag of she's going to take a quick shower and she goes into the bathroom and then comes out fully uh, hair done, mm-hmm. makeup done, dressed. Yeah, like a second later. There's also a bit where she keeps accidentally putting on a high heel shoe and a flat shoe, perhaps a slipper. Yeah. And then trying to walk, and then it's like this weird, like, limp thing. And, like, a trombone is playing while she walks. Like, that was probably live. This was intended to be live. So it's just interesting to me to be like, because I take advantage editing so much. Yeah. Like, oh, a live band was there playing her footsteps. Yeah. Like, oh, old TV is cool. Uh, we now establish she's also never met Mr. Benson. Mm-hmm. I, I have a th- comment. It's a very nice, it's a very small studio type apartment. Well, nicer than most modern studios, really. Yeah, she, <laughs> there is a moment where she walks from her bed to the kitchen. And I realize like, oh, this is basically a stage. Yeah. Because it's completely open. It's a set, yeah. There is nothing. And for some reason she has it set up that there's a dining room near the door. And then it's her bed. And then it's the kitchen. <laughs> um, yeah, but she, she dreams of this man who uh, she really wants to meet. There's some like physical comedy of her quickly cleaning. Yes. She cleans her whole apartment and is able to come back and catch the toast out of the air. Yeah. Which is cool. Which is also like a joke about how small her apartment is. Yeah, very true. Very true. And uh, then there is a knock at the door. Yes. And it's Jim Benson, the handsome tenant. Yes. Strong as an ox. He's so smart that... Or smart. He's so strong that Joni says... I bet you could even open windows on trains. <laughs> what does that mean? Because <laughs> you can't open windows on trains. Is Was that the bit? I thought so. <laughs> it just seems like a very strange and, comment. And uh, he didn't have enough eggs to make breakfast, so he asked to borrow a couple of eggs. Mm-hmm. And she says, like, I'll cook you one. Well, don't just stand out there, won't you... Uh, won't you? Uh, won't I what? Just name it, and won't you? <laughs> won't you? She very blatantly creeps on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he says something of like, he doesn't want to bother her. And she's right. like, you're not bothering me. No, 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 no. And then we establish that he's very, very into physical fitness, and he like objectifies himself. Yeah, well, he's so strong that he can close her Murphy bed. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> How strong. And then he flexes and like, does a 360 turn. I would like to say, I'm in better shape than this man. Yeah. <laughs> this man is, I mean, it's the 50s, but he is wearing his pants right under his nipples. He, he is. <laughs> to, to hide what appears to be a bit of a pot belly. Yeah. And he has arms. <laughs> like, I wouldn't say he has biceps, but... I'm sure he's 50 strong, <laughs> but he's not, he's not a model. 
So I also wanted to point out that uh, there is no dialogue until four minutes and 20 seconds into this. Yeah. So it's uh, like a lot of physical comedy and, and monologue before we even get to this. Sit down to eat. And this is where I start to get like confused. Yes. From what I gather, she asks him how he likes his coffee. And he says one lump. And then she throws in a sugar lump with the wrapper. And there's kind of like a joke, like, you got to unwrap it first. Yeah. And then I believe what happens is she grabs another sugar lump, unwraps it, and then throws the wrapper in his coffee. Because she's so flustered. Yes. And then she does something to her own coffee. I thought she dropped, like, the butter in it or something. Maybe. But, like... I was too busy trying to write down what they were talking about. I don't have this noted down. She takes, like, a sip and it. she reacts like she has bitten into a lemon. Yeah, like, I thought she dropped, like, her egg in her coffee or something. Maybe. I don't know. But it makes me very curious about the quality of the film. Because... For a show that's designed to be aired in 1950, like, there's a lot of small visual comedy. Like, there are times where we cut up to close-ups of her hands doing something. Yeah. And I'm sitting here in 2022 with my giant high-definition large-screen television going, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, like, we clearly... I think that's part of the problem of how we watch this is everything felt kind of blown up. So a lot of that detail got lost. Well, is it because it was on the big TV or is it because that's just how it looked? There's also part of me that was curious if maybe this was rotoscoped, meaning that like they filmed this, projected it to a TV screen and then filmed the TV screen to get like the actual uh, reusable tape of it. Maybe. Uh But, like, overall, it's also confusing because there's clearly a live audience there. And the audience isn't seeing it as clearly. Yeah. If they're watching just the stage performance, which would then mean that they're looking at a monitor, which would, I guess, be clearer than what is being preserved. So that's where the laughs work. It's it's a lot of interesting choices to me. This is the dawn of television, so they might not be aware of what flies and doesn't fly. Yeah. Uh, But, like, there's a lot of things that are missed because of the quality of the film. So, during this, they talk about, like, marriage and kids. Yes. And he is pro-marriage and kids, and she is very pro-marriage and kids. But he wants to be with someone who's also physically strong. Yes. Because it's against nature for strong and weak to mate. Right. So she's like, oh my god, I gotta get strong. Yeah. Uh, he also says something like, I want to say these three little words to you. And she's like, say them to me. Say those three little words. And she's, he says, you're cracking up. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about you. This reminded me a lot of Elvira. Okay. That kind of woman-pursuing man, like... It's not as overtly sexual as uh, Elvira is with the innuendo. Yeah. But all the innuendo is like, yes, marry me, instead of yes, do me. Yes, uh, you're right. It's, but by having Joan be a little bit of a garbage fire, this feels Mm -hmm. surprisingly modern. Because usually, like, we think of women in the 50s as being very naturally perfect. (laughs) So having her be like a little bit of a hot mess Mm -hmm. makes her surprisingly relatable. Yeah. So we then... Oh, one one more small thing. Sure. Uh, When he leaves, she like shuts the door and falls against it and like swoons. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, huh, it's weird that they put a mirror right next to the door. Like what if you could see, and as I was having that thought, he walked by. (laughs) yeah that's why you don't put mirrors there (laughs) that's very funny so we then see a hat shop Mm -hmm. 
And it's a man talking to a customer about the hat shop. And he's frustrated because his, uh, he's Joni's boss and it's 10, 15 and Joni's still not at work. The customer kind of like wanders out and her boss goes like, I wish I hadn't hired her. I hate you into the mirror. I hate you. <laughs> oh, I could never stay mad at you. It's like yes. very odd. It's a very strange, like today this would be a very effeminate character. Yes. Uh, but instead, he's just kind of strange in this. So we we get this, and then she finally shows up to work. Mm-hmm. And we get this great line where he goes, yes, And don't give me any more trouble. Sometimes I swear I don't know whether to kill you or kill myself. May I make a suggestion? No! <laughs> That's a great joke. And she is to help Mrs. Huntington choose a hat. Yes. Because she works at a uh, a hat shop. A hat store. Uh, it's also noted that, because I had this thought, the the man who's in charge also makes the hat. The, makes the hats. Yes. He's a hatter. Uh, and by then, the idea of mad as a hatter was also still a, like, a common saying. So I was wondering if they made him so... Again, flamboyant's not the right word. Um, exaggerated? Yeah. Because he was a hatter and thus would probably be a little bit off because and, hatters went crazy because they worked with mercury all the time. Yeah, and mercury stopped being used for hats in 1941, so fairly recent to the making of this. Yeah, so that would be like a common reference. And if you'd been a hatter for more than 10 years, you would have worked with mercury. Exactly. You know, facts about mercury. So she helps Mrs. Huntington, the customer, choose a hat. And the first one is this, like, awful thing with a giant ostrich feather. hmm And she goes, I don't know, some enchanted evening you might want to tickle a stranger across a crowded room. Yeah. Which is a pop culture jokes. Yeah. It's from South Pacific. Some enchanted evening. Oh, okay. So she's doing a pop culture bit. hmm With a song that is now a standard that everyone would have known at the time. Because this is back when, like, Broadway was pop music. Those, like, musical theater standards. And so Joni kind of, you know, zones out. And the next thing she gives Mrs. Huntington is the lid of the hat box. Yeah, which she loves. Yeah, and then she realizes it's the hat box. And uh, Joni apologizes and says, like, oh, you know, I I met a man today. Mm -hmm. And Mrs. Huntington is super cool with it. Yes. She's sympathetic to Joni wanting a husband and decides to help her. Yes. And directs she, her towards... A health club. Health club, yes. But she's like, I can't get out of work. Because she, she literally just got to work. So, she takes what I assume is a lipstick. Yes. And dots her face with it. And uh, her boss comes out and is like, Joni, what's wrong with you? And she's like, I have the purple plague. It's not a big deal. I just need a shot every day. To make it go away and to keep me from being contagious. It infects your face and your diaplumpus. Yeah. Don't quite understand what the diaplumpus is about. Nope. The boss gets freaked out and was like, go to the doctor. Go, go, go. Because he's afraid he's going to get it. And then he says, "Uh uh-oh, I can feel it. I can feel it in my (laughs) diaplumpus. Ah, it's too late. The purple plague. Oh, I've got it. Good heavens. I'm going to clash with the drapes. At which point I go, did you not know you were filming in black and white? There's a lot of color-based humor for a black and white television show. So Joni gets to this health farm. No thoughts about that? No. Okay. I thought that would be more conversational than it was. I, I I mean, I think that's just very much of the time of you're telling the audience what color it is because they can't see it. Right. So, because the audience knows that, like, their world is in color. Right. So. I just think the whole clashing with the drapes was like, well, we don't know that because we don't know what color the drapes are. That might be the joke. Maybe? TV is a relatively new form back then. I know, but like, meta humor hadn't really caught on yet. <laughs> I mean, br- 
breaking the fourth wall humor, I guess. Yeah, I mean, he does direct that to the camera lens and then wander off. Because, <laughs> like, his scene is over. So he just kind of wanders away. Yeah, I thought of it as being like a cute little fourth wall break. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Um, it might even be, if it's, all, if it's done live, it might even be a little nod to the audience. Like a little, you know, oh. treat for them. Because they can see what the drapes look like. They can see in color if you're there live. So she gets to the health spa. And she meets this big gym teacher, uh, trunch bowl kind of woman. Like. Yeah, the trunch bowl is a good uh, explanation. But like a kinder, gentler trunch bowl. Yeah. Like this woman is not, she's an antagonist to Joni, but she's not like a mean, bad person. Yeah. And there's a great exchange where Joni has, um, uh, the gym teacher has Joni punch her in the stomach. Yes. And Joni's hand hurts. Yes. And she's like, are you wearing an iron girdle? And the gym teacher's like, nope, all me. (laughs) And she goes, well, oh, well, Mr. Benson and I will have a lovely time in the moonlight punching each other. Yeah. Oh, because the gym teacher's like, you can look like this too. Mm Mm-hmm. And I found that very funny. Yeah. The gym teacher also says something along the lines of, I'm going to change everything about you. I'm going to break you down completely and rebuild you as something else. And Joni goes, can I stay a girl? Yeah. Which I thought was a fun joke. So the next, by the next I mean the rest, the rest of this is physical comedy. Yes. It's just a series of like physical comedy bits. Yeah, I, my next note is actually a lot of physical comedy. Joni sucks at phys ed. Yeah, she is forced to change into something that doesn't fit. She does, uh, like, kind of a breaststroke move, but because her sleeves are so long, she's slapping the other women in the face. Yeah, she didn't have gym clothes, so she needed to borrow. Uh, There's a through line that uh, she hasn't eaten. Yes. And uh, they're they're telling her, like, we'll give you a chance to eat, but every time she's giving it a chance to eat, it doesn't work out. She's, (laughs) like, wearing boxing gloves and unable to eat. Um... There's, and we're going out throughout the day, so there's a shot of a static clock on occasion. Yeah. To show that time has moved. At least. Not a moving clock. Yes. Just a static clock. And, and like, the lighting changes. Kind of like, like the sun is setting. Yes. But only like an hour had passed. So, uh, there's a great moment where everybody gets to get a snack. Yeah. Uh, and one girl gets... Oh, because a very important thing is Joni only has one day. This whole... Yes. This uh, program is supposed to last a full week. Yeah, and she's going to do it all in one day. So everybody gets a piece of fruit. Like, here's an apple for you, an orange for you, and then Joni gets a single walnut. Yes. I had the thought of at least Joni got something with protein. This is true. Uh, but she doesn't have a way to crack it, so she tricks a fat woman to sit on it. <laughs> yes. Just things like that are happening. Uh, I also wanted to bring up this line where she's asked, uh, imagine some other woman, uh, is stealing or your husband or like sleeping with your husband. Uh, how will you react or punch this punching bag to let out that aggression? And Joni goes up and kind of like nicks it. Yeah. And... The Trunchable goes, what was that? And Jody says, well, I don't want to lose him. <laughs> Which is a great joke and, like, very interesting to think about in the context of 1950. Like, how like how much of a joke is this? Yeah. Because it's not like there's a lot of divorce going on in 1950s. Like, if your husband is not the best... You're not actually going to punch them or divorce them in 1950. Right. But it gets a big laugh. So I was definitely like, I, I enjoyed that slice of life uh, moment. It's a very interesting joke. Oh, sorry. I thought you still had more to say on it. So at the end of the day, class is dismissed for everybody but Joni. Yes. Because she's doing everything in a shorter amount of time and Joni's like on the ground unable to keep going yeah unfortunately 
She has to keep going. They throw her onto an exercise bike. Put those... <laughs> I'm sorry to anyone that's not going to get this reference. The Iron Sheik workout clubs in each hand. A barbell in her mouth. And then one of those straps that you go around your belly that just shakes you. Yeah. You don't see those much anymore. No. <laughs> not a lot of gyms have the belly shaker. Probably because it didn't do anything. But it, it's such an iconic, like thing you always saw it is the like iconic, old timey yeah the the old timey workout was uh <laughs> you 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 shook your belly with the strap you rode a penny farthing uh you had a weight that was two giant balls on each side yes and you had this this the string that you stretched your out with your chest yes that was the the 30s strongman workout routine <laughs> Finally, we get to the end. And yes. we're back at Joni's apartment, and she says something like, Oh, Mr. Benson, I didn't think you'd ask me for a date so soon. So her mm-hmm. gambit has worked mm-hmm. until he is pushing her out in a wheelchair. In a wheelchair, because she is destroyed from her workout. And that's it. I thought this pilot does a pretty. The pilot does a lot of legwork establishing yeah. Mr. Benson. Her job, you get the idea that Mrs. Huntington would have been a recurring character. Yeah, like we establish a lot about our characters and our, like the people we will continue to see in this show. Uh, so much physical comedy. Yes. Like I did not expect this to be so much physical comedy. Uh, Joan Davis is, no, like I Marry Joan also is notable for, figure, for uh, physical comedy. I can't believe I don't know who Joan Davis is after seeing this. Because the first half is Elvira. Yeah. It's these, like, comedy chops to deliver these lines. The second half is all physical comedy. It's Lucille Ball. Right. It's Vita Vigia Vegemin and the Chocolate Shop. It's very much the Chocolate Conveyor Belt. Just like, Joni go wild. Go wild and be silly. And it works. Like, I don't know why she's not a legend after seeing this. I mean, she did a ton. Uh, Like, her filmography is very long. Right. What I'm saying is I haven't seen Nicole Kidman play her in a movie. True. But she's playing Lucille Ball. Uh, Joan Davis uh, passed away in 1961. 1961? Yeah, of a heart attack. Oh, that's so unfortunate. So... She's actually um, in her mid-30s, or in her mid-40s, excuse me, when she makes I Marry Joan. Okay. So she's actually, like, she's surprisingly old for an actress. Yeah. In that time, to be playing a, a, you know, American every woman working girl. She's in her Mm mid-40s. She looks great. She does look great. So, because she's 43. When I married Joan, or she's forty three. When Let's Join Joni is made, wow, and she's uh, about forty six when she's making uh, I Married Joan, right? And her husband is played by Jim Backus of Mister Magoo and uh, the Millionaire really? and his wife fame, uh, Gilligan's Island. He plays the millionaire. Yes. Wow, that's very interesting. I, I thought this was spectacular. Like, I really did. There, There's, like, a little something for everybody. Like, it seems to me like that perfect show where everyone can sit in front of the television. The children would laugh at all the silly stuff. And then there's just enough shots over their head for the, just the parents to get. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing too risque. I mean, it's the 50s, so they weren't gonna ever go like crazy but there's a little there's a few things in here that i was like that would have been scandalous for the time yeah i mean she was known for physical comedy uh she she was already beginning to have heart problems while making i married joan yeah so she has that issue of uh it was one of the reasons that i married joan only lasted two or three seasons Mm. But it was one of the first shows to be syndicated. 
Really? So yeah, we can you can find episodes of I Mary Joan on YouTube. They have survived. Wow. Uh, I was I was trying to find because she also made another unsold pilot. Oh wow! I would love to spend more time with Joan. Uh, she so. made the Joan Davis show, which had uh, Joan Davis playing a musical comedian. Really? And uh, it didn't sell, but it was found by the Museum of Television and Radio in New York. Okay. So it might end up being something on our next trip to the Paley Center. That would be great, because I, I really enjoyed this. And yeah, Joni Davis, so funny, so talented, and someone that should be in the conversation of, like, the first female comedians. Yes, she she was very very popular. Yeah, on radio. That makes sense. So I, I think it's pretty obvious, but I will ask anyway. What's your what's your verdict here? I would say it's a stay tuned. This is a hardcore stay tuned, and it's like, charming. It's a little old fashioned, but it's charming. Yeah, I mean, I'll say what I I said back when we reviewed uh, the old Archie is there there aren't shows like this anymore. No. Like, I'm trying to think of the last time that they just took a star and then were like, we're making a very silly show around the fact that we have this star. And like, it's not really a thing anymore. Maybe something like the Mindy Project? Maybe. Maybe the Mindy Project. But like, also, Mindy Project was multiple cameras. Or no, it was single camera rather than that sitcom style. Yeah, I mean, they don't make a lot of those kinds of sitcoms anymore. The only sitcom I can think of is that Tim Allen one, which I also think is gone now. Last Man Standing? Last Man Standing. I believe it is still kicking. Is it? I believe, like, it's changed channels a bunch of times. I mean, I didn't Oh no, it just, it it aired its last episode in 2021. Okay. But I believe it was one of those, it went out on its own, um... Like, it wasn't, like, canceled. I think it actually just, like, finished. Gotcha. Gotcha. Because, like, I think I'd like Stay Doomed to visit sitcom, the sitcom plot, a little bit more often. Sure. Because I really enjoy them. And they're just not around. And they're a great area of television. And it's also, like, it's interesting to think, like, in 1950s, these jokes were new. Yes. So you can get away with just kind of like simpler jokes. Uh, so yeah, it's a stay tuned from me as well. Yeah, I because I, I found a few. I anytime I happen across uh, an old sitcom, I do save it. So there have been some I found. So. So that's gonna do it for. Let's join Joni. I'm going to pull up our Patreon poll because there's going to be two Patreon choices this month because there wasn't one. Uh, last month and uh, see what we'll be doing next week according to that poll I also want to invite you to join our Patreon join our Patreon at patreon.com slash plus two comedy uh, we actually have a bonus bonus episode right up now that's up on the old Patreon where you can listen to us discuss our Razzie month voting we have voted for our Razzie winners, and uh, we will see what happens uh, come award time. I don't know when the Razzies are. They're soon, aren't they? I Did believe, they happen? Uh, they've not happened yet. I believe they are next week. Okay, so we'll see how uh, if our opinions match those of our fellow Razzie voting uh, al- alumnus. No. Comrades. Uh, for the the Razzie Awards. But if you want to hear who we voted for, join our Patreon. Our esteemed our... fellow delegates. Yes. Uh, and next week, according to our patrons, it was a nail biter. But it appears that Razzie Month is not fully over, as we will be doing... Waving through a window. Dear Evan Hansen. Which, in the poll, I wrote is dead Evan Hansen? <laughs> because I'm dyslexic. Oh my gosh, this this is going to be a fun one. Where can people find us? You can email us at staydoomedshow at gmail.com or on Facebook and Twitter at Stay Doomed. And if you can find us a one-season wonder or pilot from the 1940s, I'm at Plus Two Comedy. If you're aware that that is a nearly impossible ask. Uh, but if you find some sitcoms 
uh, that you're interested in. Uh, I found a few that we're going to be doing in the near future. But if you uh, if you have any sitcoms you'd like to request, I am at Bean Bunny Lives. Until next time, stay doomed. <laughs>